Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, September 19th, 2024. And here are some of today's trends in the news. The only place in the world where you get trends in the news. Because the trend is your friend, and nobody else knows how to do it. Don't teach it at Harvard. Don't teach it at Yale. Don't teach it at Princeton. Don't teach it at Oxford, Cambridge, because... They don't know how. Oh, but we'll tell you what history is. Yeah, we're going to rewrite bullshit and shove it down your throat. Can't see ahead. No, no, only look behind. And only look behind and swallow the crap that we shove down your throat. You're still in kindergarten. Again, my books, Trends 2000, international bestseller. Trend tracking, far better than Megatrends, Time Magazine. The Trends Journal, Weekly Magazine. Averages about 180 pages a week. No ads. Nobody tells us what to do. And what we're telling you, and you can think for yourself, we are at the most critical socioeconomic and geopolitical crisis in the history of the world, part one and part two. But before we get to that, let's talk about what will make everybody happy. Everybody like Vanguard, State Street, Black Rock. Yeah, perfect name for Black Rock. Yeah, they only own 88% of the S&P. 1% on 54% of all the equities. So good news for them today. Let's see the markets. Dow is up 522 points. S&P, 1.7%. NASDAQ. 2.51%. Yep. Why? Well, you know why. They lowered interest rates. And what are we saying to Trends Journal? When interest rates, if they go down, it's right there. The magazine came out on, and we've been saying this for months, months. But the one that just came out on Tuesday, and this is the cover. Occupy Peace, get on board. Yep. Again, the rally is coming up. On uh, September 28th, very close. Judge Napolitano, Scott Ritter, Max Blumenthal, and others. So please come and do what you can to come up here. Because if we don't have peace, we're going to die in war. End of story. We'll get to that later. Because that's really getting... It's, it's, it's a reality. <sighs> so anyway, I was talking about the... Uh, the markets. And... Uh, why they went up. And we said in the Trends Journal that they would go up like this if they lowered interest rates 50 basis points. And we also said gold prices will rise and keep rising if they lower them 50 basis points. So as we go on the air, gold is at $2,585. Dollars per ounce. Now you go to your top trends for 2024, and it's a golden year for gold. That's right. Gold is up some $550 an ounce since we made that forecast. So you don't want to subscribe to the Trends Journal for $2.56 a week. You could subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. That gives you nothing anymore. But that's the way it is. So the headline, Fed goes big with half-point raise. So what is it going to do? Well, credit card balances, small businesses, variable rate loans, but not only the variable rate loans for small businesses, but for those uh, banksters that are going to go bust because they're going to be default on those variable rate loans when the buildings go bust, the office buildings. So, yeah, they're going to come down a bit on the... Uh, variable rate loans on those office buildings, but ain't going to make any difference. And what else do we have? And by the way, most of the street, you know, a lot of the street, we, we only put the facts in the Trends Journal. Uh, on Tuesday, we said that CNBC survey said it was only going to be a 25 basis point drop. We didn't say what it was going to be because it's a, uh, it's a guess. So we don't, you know, we don't know, we don't, we don't make it up. 
but we did say what would the implications be, and the implications are here. Rate cut caps winning streak for Biden and Harris on prices, but will it matter? This is an article in the, uh, I think it's the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, one of them. And they go on, it's a, a very small slice, Josh Evans of the Economic Policy Institute in Washington said, of people who would recognize the kind of symbolic importance of the cut. But again, the credit cards are going to go down, car, things are going to go down. This is a positive for the uh, Harris administration or the Democrats. Um, what else do we have here? Consumer expectations for the economy improved in August, according to the University of Michigan study. But um, they still remain low by history, historical terms and a down from the start of Biden's term. So we've been saying Harris is going to win unless, unless there's a financial crisis. Then it goes to Trump. They're going to do everything they can, we said, to keep lowering interest rates before the run-up to the presidential reality show. And that's exactly what they're doing in hopes of boosting the economy a bit so the people vote for Harris. Ah, this is from the, uh, the Wall Street Journal. Rate cuts pave way for overseas central banks. We've been saying this for months. They're going to wait until the Fed cuts rates and they're all in the same club. They know when the Fed's going to cut it and they cut it. But the uh, Bank of England didn't cut their rates today, which is, to me, just stupid because the EU economy is an F-U-C-K EU economy, uh, UK economy, rather. It's, it's bad. So they didn't cut them, but a lot of countries are because they can't cut rates if the U.S. rates are high because their currencies will go down. So the lower U.S. cuts the rates, the more other central banks will cut their rates. And, as we said, the higher gold prices will go. We've only been saying this for about eh, a year and a half when rates were at the top. August home sales dropped more than expected. As prices set new records, this is CNBC. You ready? The median price of a home in the United States, $416,000. It went up 3.1% from August of last year. We've been saying that despite the high interest rates, it's in your magazine, the Trends Journal. Again, you go to trendsjournal.com, that there won't be a housing slump, even when everybody else is saying it. And then you look at the data, the median price again, $416,700. There were 1.35 million units for sale at the end of August, according to the data. That's up 0.7% from July and nearly 23% from year on year. But it's still below the six-month supply on average. So, yes, it's getting bad, but with these interest rates going down, the mortgage rates are going to go down too. Listen to this. Remember I told you what the median price was. There are houses selling in August were up significantly for homes priced above $750,000, but down from anything below $500,000. Could you imagine? So the rich are getting richer, and us plantation workers of slave land, they keep getting poorer. And they keep stealing our money in the name of taxes, while the riches don't. Oh, you remember all you Trump fans, huh? Oh, you like that tax cut he gave back in uh, 2017 when the run percent got 64% of the benefits? And he bullshitted that they were going to use these tax breaks for capital improvements so we could have more jobs in America. And the next year was the biggest year of stock buybacks ever. Yeah, but we won't talk about that. 
because, hey, I only like what I like. I like Trump. I like Harris. I like Donald Duck. I like Minnie Mouse. You ready for this? First time home buyers made up just 26% of August sales, the all time low from November 2021 at the height of the COVID war. So the bigs are buying up all the apartment units. They own the country. Robert Barron's USA. And what else do we have here? Ah, FanDuel parent buys Italian company. Israel firm and Apollo affiliate and finance venture. Yeah. One after another. One after another. Each week in the Trends Journal, we have bigs getting bigger. Now with interest rates going down, you're going to see the merger and, acti at merger and acquisition activity increase. So the bigs are even going to get bigger. Oh, this is interesting. Economy outlook supply worsens. Germany's economic sentiment worsened unexpectedly sharply this month. Another signal of weakness in Europe's largest economy as optimism continues to dwindle. Look at this tiny little article, no facts in their data, buried in the Wall Street Journal. Buried. Germany's basically in a recession. They say it's Europe's largest economy. They forgot to mention it's the world's third largest economy. And then you look at the world's second largest economy. That's a shithole. China. We don't talk about that. But we talk about it a lot in your Trends Journal. Article after article after article. So going on now to the geopolitics and the Israel war. You know, this, is the, this is how propaganda is sold. This is the toilet paper record. The New York slime. They call themselves the paper record. How about go fuck yourself? Ready? For militants, toll is mental and physical. This is today's paper. Istanbul. First, hundreds of pages blew up. Killing and injuring members of Lebanon's most effective military organization and filling the country's hospitals with wounded patients. Militants. Yep. Nearly 10% of the cases are critical and many patients remain in intensive care. Media medics perform 460 operations on hands, faces, and eyes. Isn't that great? Militants. They keep, you read all of the media. Yeah. This is from uh, the Financial Times. Militant group struggles to restore calm after double blow exposes its vulnerabilities. The humiliating blow to a militant force. The explosion left the militant group contending with badly reduced access. Hezbollah blamed the initial attack on Israel which has not con commented the militant leader, Hassan Nasar Nasrallah. Militant, militant. The attack has embarrassed the militant group, which the Iran-backed militant group, the people said the militant group, this isn't journalism, it's total fucking propaganda. They keep calling Hamas a militant group. It's a militant group and not Hamas, excuse me, Hezbollah and Hamas, of course. They keep calling Hezbollah a militant group. These are the Lebanese that threw Israel out of Lebanon that they had invaded. They finally threw them out in 2006. Yet they're militants. So if somebody comes into your house, tries to take it over and tries to kill everybody there, and you kill them, you're a militant. That's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. We don't do this 
disgusting, prostitute, arrogant, ballless little pricks. That was bullshit. Yep. Patrick Kinsley. Yeah, well, this guy always writes about this crap too. And who's this by? Um, somebody Tapa. Yeah, Tapio. Fucking. This is from Times. A tactical success for Israel with no clear strategic effect. You're 100 percent right. Hezbollah has said they are at war. This is a country uh, or military that defeated Iran. The articles that you read, again, we go to Press TV, we go to Tehran Times, we go to Middle East News, Arab News, we get the picture from everybody that you don't get in America or the West. Hezbollah's Secretary General says Hamas is Hassan Nasala says, uh, blah, 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 blah. the enemy has crossed all red lines and all laws in this attack. When the enemy planned out this attack, they assumed there were at least 4,000 pages spread out all across Lebanon. This means that the enemy had the intention of murdering 4,000 people in a single minute. I can tell you with utmost certainty that this attack did not break us and will not break us. Again, that's press TV. Hamas vows flood of martyrdom operations in Israeli occupied cities in response to Gaza. You have ignited a fire that will never be extinguished until we repel you away from our home and our land. This thing is going to continue to escalate. From the New York Times today, new explosions rock Hezbollah, leaving 20 dead. The pager explosions fanned fears of a wider Middle East war. Quote, Israel is pushing the entire region toward the abyss of regional war. Ayman Safadi, the Jordan foreign minister, told reporters. Such a war would have a drastic ramifications, not only for the region, but for the world. 100% correct. Sending more deep weapons to strike deeper into Russia. Again, we detailed, you can read it in the, in the Trends Journal. Matter of fact, we did it in the economic update section when we learned yesterday, when before the magazine went out, that they killed all these people in Lebanon when, they, when their pages blew up. And we quoted the foreign minister, where they go, the hell you call him, the defense minister of uh, Israel, Gallant, we said we're going to take military action against Hezbollah. And again, if I mention Hezbollah or Hamas and got it wrong, you know, take it easy. I got a lot of stuff on my mind. And military action, that's not going to solve the problem. It's only going to make it worse. And that quote made by the Jordanian is 100% correct. Israel war, the Ukraine war, this is world war. And it's only going to be worse, and it could be nuclear war. If we don't unite for peace and fight for peace in a peaceful way, it's finished. Look at World War II and in ancient history. And now look at the new weapons that they have. I was a speaker at Virginia Military Institute back in 2000, just before 9-11. And they asked me how the wars would be fought in the future. Because, again, I had best-selling book, Trends 2000. And I wrote about new millennium warfare. <laughs> yeah. Like nothing we've ever seen. And not a penny. Not a penny for peace to the billionaires. And you're banned for peace on the Western media. So please come to our rally. And donate what you can. You know, 
I'm a one man show over here. We got to, we got to unite and we got great people that are behind us a million percent. Judge Napolitano, Scott Ritter, what Scott Ritter is doing, oh, how he's helping so much to make this happen. Anya Parampil, Max Blumenthal, Joe Loria, Consortium News. They'll be here. And we're doing the best we can, but we need your help. Can't do it alone. Again, united we stand, divided we die. You, UN accuses Israel of massive, massive violation of child rights treaty in Gaza. Yep. Slaughtering them. In front of everybody's eyes, for everybody to see. Yep. More than nearly 12,000 12, minors have been killed in Gaza. That does not, that's not on the front pages of any of the Western media. Now, the show is Russia bombed an apartment in, 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 uh, in Kiev or someplace. And then this is an article in the toilet paper today. Again, we read everything. We want to know what everybody's saying. This, that's what we do as trend forecasts. This is what they're reporting. This is our analysis, and this is our forecast. So there's no propaganda in there. At the very end of this column over here, and again, that's what we do. We read the whole piece, underline the salient points, and the writers write about them. Press, this is, this is about Trump's hateful rhetoric has to stop, Harris says. But when asked about Gaza and what's going on in the Middle East, pressed on whether she would change the United States policy toward the Middle East, toward Israel, because of the Gaza conflict. Isn't that a nice word, conflict? Ms. Harris dodged the question three times, repeatedly pointing to a deal the Biden administration has struggled to broker between Israel and Hamas to institute a ceasefire in exchange for hostages held in Gaza. Quote, we need to get it done immediately, she said. And that is my position. It is my policy. We need to get this deal done but I'm not doing a fucking thing to do it. I'm just bullshitting you because I'm a bullshitter. Oh, and we're sending them more weapons to kill the people. Not a word about peace. And again, it's in your trends journal. The United States said reportedly, that they warned Israel do not accelerate this war against Lebanon. And they did it anyway. It's right in your trench journal, word for word, that was reported by the mainstream media. World War III has begun. When they start blowing up, Pipelines in Russia, their refineries, their uh, oil depots, etc. And Iran gets into this war. You're going to see Brent crude, which is now selling at around $74 a barrel, go to about $130 a barrel. And that'll crash the global economy and the equity markets. And it will ignite World War III officially. This is serious. This isn't made up crap. I'm a trend forecaster. I had forecast this right in the cover of the magazine two days before Russia launched this military operation against Ukraine on February 22nd, 2022. They launched it on February 24th. Yep. It's right there. From COVID war to Ukraine war to world war, talk of peace is forbidden. And you know why peace is forbidden? Because pieces of shit are running a cunt tree near you. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, get our T-shirt. This is the way I feel. If you feel the same, hey, politicians, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? 
Here we are, and this is where you go to get it. And don't forget the rally, September 28th, 2024, coming up soon. And please donate what you can and bring as many people. We've been getting loads of calls. They just got an email, a guy coming in from Kansas, another one from Michigan. They're coming in from all over. We got to close down the streets and make this heard. Because if our voice of peace isn't heard, the maniacs, voices for war will be heard around the world as we get annihilated in nuclear war. And yesterday again, I did Salenti and the judge. Please tune in. He'll be here as well. Thank you so much.